Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free review for Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. But before we go ahead and get on into the review, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new bookish content. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and sometimes other days throughout the week. Also, don't forget to check down in the description box for links to all of my social media, my Buddy Read Discord, and my Patreon where you can be entered into winning book giveaways. When he was nine, he watched as his mother and brother were killed before him. By the time he was 13, he was the leader of a band of bloodthirsty thugs. By 15, he intends to be king. It is time for Prince Honoris Jorg Ancrath to return to the castle he turned his back on to take what's rightfully his. Since the day he hung pinned on the thorns of a briar patch and watched Count Renard's men slaughter his mother and younger brother, Jorg has been driven to vent his rage. Life and death are no more than a game to him, and he has nothing left to lose. But treachery awaits him in his father's castle, treachery and dark magic. No matter how fierce his will, can one young man conquer enemies with powers beyond his imagining? Prince of Thorns is the first book in Mark Lawrence's Broken Empire series, and it is the first Mark Lawrence book that I have ever read. And I actually own a lot of his books, if you can see it. And this was my first delve into his world. I originally was not going to read this series because I've heard that it is extremely grimdark and it's violent and the main character is not likable. But in order to read the Red Queen's War trilogy, you do kind of have to be acclimated to the world. So my dear bookish friend Michelle was kind enough to get me the entire trilogy and one of my patrons, Patrick, picked for me to read it last month and I'm really glad that he did. The way that I structure my reviews is I talk about the world, the characters, the things that I liked, the things that I didn't like, and then I give the book an overall rating. If you're interested in just skipping to any of those particular portions, I'll go ahead and put timestamps down below. In Prince of Thorns, we follow a prince, a character named Jorik Ancraft, and when he was nine years old, he witnessed the brutal murder of his wife and younger brother at the hands of Count Renard, who kind of runs the kingdom next to his father's kingdom. And unfortunately, his father did absolutely nothing to avenge his wife and son's death. Jorik was incredibly traumatized by this event and he ended up taking revenge into his own hands. So he left home when he was 10 years old and ended up being the leader of this kind of violent ruffian gang that goes around killing and pillaging parts of this fantastical world. And he is hellbent on killing Count Renard for what he did to his mom and brother. Prince of Thorns is definitely grimdark. There is a lot of violence in this book. There is allusions or references to rape and sexual assault even from our main character who admits to the reader that he has raped in the past but it's not graphic it's just alluded to the violence on the other hand and the killing is very graphic so in my opinion i would definitely classify this trilogy as grimdark because Prince of Thorns is such a short book, the world building is definitely more narrow in scope. We don't get that kind of Brandon Sanderson feel where there's a ton of backstory, a ton of lore that is in this world in order to build up this world. And there actually is a reason for that that I don't want to go into because of spoilers, but just know that this world does not seem to have a lot of fluff to it, I almost want to say. The author kind of just gives the reader a little bit of clues about this world and is up to the reader to interpret that. There are fantastical elements in this world. There are necromancers, which I was not expecting, and that was kind of introduced towards the end of the book. So there's necromancy. There is kind of like this, I want to say this other race that reminds me of mutated humans. So we have that. And then we also have these like ghosts or spirits that really remind me of that that scene uh, from Lord of the Rings and the Two Towers where the hobbits are walking through the bogs and the spirits are living in the bogs. That's what it reminded me of. There was a very, there was a scene that was very similar to that in my opinion. So that's the only way I can explain like the ghosts and spirits. And then there's also sorcerers and Jorg does have direct contact with a sorcerer. So despite the fact that this book is very short and the world building is more narrow in scope, there's definitely still those fantastical elements that help the reader identify this book as a fantasy. 
On the flip side, there are references in this book to things of our world. The author includes a lot of references to Christianity, which really surprised me when I first uh, started reading it. And then Jorg also has had access to and read the works of ancient Greek philosophers that are from our own history. And this does kind of play into the entire wo world building of this book, but just know that our author did combine fantastical elements with real historical elements from our world. This is a first person point of view story and we basically follow Jorg and we are inside Jorg's head through the entire story. There are side characters, but they are just very underdeveloped that there's really not a lot that I can say about them. There are side characters that are more prevalent than others and more important than others, but Jorg is definitely the character that we wanna focus on the most. And Jorg is a very complex character. He's a dark character. Like I said, he witnessed the murder of his mom and brother when he was young and he ended up getting injured. Also, uh, during that altercation, he was thrust into a briar patch and got just torn up by the briars. And the briars actually, some of them are embedded in him kind of and cause flare-ups and pain for him uh, at certain times. So he is still dealing with the physical repercussions of what Cat Renard did, as well as the mental repercussions. In my personal opinion, I think that Jorg is suffering from a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder. Just, you know, some of the ways that certain experiences can trigger memories for him. Um, I did kind of see that. Once Jorg realized that his father was not going to avenge his mother and brother's death, he basically just turns completely cold and cuts himself off from all of his emotions. And we see this in the book as he starts to become this cold, calculating, and cruel character. So when he's 10, he leaves home and sets off on a mission of revenge and goes around just killing and pillaging in this fantastical world. And like I said, he's very violent. He has no problem with killing his enemies as well as his part of his group that defy him or anger him. He constantly thinks about murder and killing quite frequently. And it is a little bit, I don't want to say hard to read, but it's very odd to read uh, from someone's point of view that is constantly thinking about violence. However, I will say that there are redeemable qualities about Jorg. He is very intelligent. You know, the author talks about the fact that he has read all of these books, these um, ancient texts when he was a child. He's a very gifted, intellectually wise child. He is very smart when it comes to battle strategy. So he just reminds me of a young man that is incredibly gifted, incredibly intelligent, and was mature beyond his age, which makes him more believable when you read about a 14-year-old that's doing all the stuff that he's doing. At first glance, Jorg's motivations for all of his actions is clearly revenge, but as the story goes on, there are little bits of information that are thrown in uh, by the author that there might be more to this than originally thought, and at the end of the book we do learn uh, kind of the reasons for some of Jorg's actions that have nothing to do with what happened to him when, when he was a child. So there is a little bit of redemption with regards to Jorg and just his sadism and cruelty. Now I'm going to talk about the things that I liked. So the first thing I liked was Mark Lawrence's prose. It was very simple, but I absolutely loved it. There were just ways that he communicated, you know, Jorg's thoughts, his emotions that really, really spoke to me. It was incredibly dark, but it was so believable. And I just found it extremely well done. He's not one of those authors that is overly descriptive when he's like describing a scene or like a castle or what people are wearing. You know, that's probably one of the reasons that the book is so short because he's not overly descriptive by that. But when it came to conveying our main character's emotions and how those emotions were affecting him and when he was thinking about uh, memories or recalling memories and just how those memories affected him, oh my gosh, it was so good. And I just found myself sucked in and loving it so, so much. And that kind of leads into the fact that our author was able to create such a complex character that I actually liked reading about. It reminds me a lot of Glockta from the First Law Trilogy. So I always, always recognize when an author is able to take a character that has done despicable things and is just not likable at all, is not good, is not noble, and is able to make me like him and want to read about him and want to continue on it, following his journey through this series. And that I think is very hard to do. Most fantasies I feel like revolve around a main character that is good. 
which is fine. I like that too. But I just think it takes a good writer to make me want to read about a character that is not good at all. And the last thing I liked was the way that the author incorporated elements of our world into this book and did it very subtly. So there are little uh, tidbits of information thrown in that kind of reveals to the reader some explanation about the world and I found it incredibly clever and I absolutely loved it. I have been talking to some of my bookish friends online who really really uh, couldn't stand it but I thought it was a very clever uh, device and I'm really interested to see how it continues to play out into the, into the next two books. As for the dislikes, there really wasn't a ton. If I had to choose a couple, it would just be the scope of the world and how narrow it was. You know, I would have liked to spend more time in Jorg's father's castle, understanding the world, the kingdoms, his father, you know, all of that backstory I think would have helped, but it didn't detract really from my enjoyment of the book. And then another thing would be the violence. Um, for me personally, it's hard to read a lot of violence at a lot of time. So I'm glad that this book was so short. For example, Last Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. Um, I actually had to stop reading that book in the middle and go read something else for a while because uh, it is just violent. The whole thing is violent. And this book is very similar, but it's not as long and it's not as heavy, so I was able to get through it. But uh, just violence after violence after violence, both um, the action and the thought can be very hard for me to read for long periods of time. So if you're sensitive to that, just know going in that this book is very violent. So, but it's the, it's the nature of the story. So I don't want to say it, that it's a dislike and I was able to get through it, but um, it could be a negative for a lot of people. All in all, I really enjoyed Prince of Thorns. I was pleasantly surprised by how much I liked it. I was really scared I was going to hate it and DNF it. And I flew through it and I ended up loving reading about Jorg. And I cannot wait to continue the series. And I ended up giving the book four out of five stars. Okay, you guys, let me know in the comments if you have read Prince of Thorns and what you thought of it, and I will see y'all in another video. Goodbye!